Good evening, everybody. It's Victoria from the Council on Aging and Social Services Department. Uh, we are gathered here tonight, both in person and virtually by Zoom, um, with part of the research team from UMass Boston, who helped us do our community needs survey. We have Dr. Caitlin Coyle and we have Mary Krebs um, with us tonight. And what they're going to do is they're going to basically give us a good information um, update on everything that they collected with the surveys and how they process the results and kind of the big picture of how this is going to be for all of us here in Berlin. I just wanted to let everybody in the audience know that at this point, the meeting is being recorded. So you, even though it is not a formal meeting, um, your image, your name, your face may be appearing on the recording. And we just wanted to give everybody fair warning. Um, if anybody has any questions along the way, please just raise your hand, let me know, and we can make sure that either Caitlin or Mary get them answered. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to both Caitlin and Mary to help us get our information session. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, again, I'm Mary Krebs, and I'm here with Dr. Caitlin Coyle from UMass Boston's Gerontology Institute. Um, Caitlin is the director of the Center for Social and Demographic Research on Aging, and I'm a member of the research team. And so for those of you who are less familiar with us, let me give you a bit of background. Uh, our small center at the Gerontology Institute has been around since 2012. And since we've worked with over 60 communities across the Commonwealth, helping them plan for the aging of their population. And so the idea is that the state university, uh, it's our mission to serve the Commonwealth. And so we work and partner with municipalities across the state to help them gather the relevant data and then identify plans for how they might develop delivery and support systems of residents to age in communities. This is something that we do and we've been doing for a while. And today we're gonna to talk to you about our work here in Berlin. And so there are three parts of the presentation tonight. Uh, first, I'm gonna provide an overview of the project. Then you'll be presented with the key findings from the study. Uh, that's a summary of all of the data collected. And uh, last, we'll offer recommendations for consideration by the town of Berlin. Keep in mind that these findings and recommendations are highlights from the final needs assessment report. I would like to start by talking a little bit more about people to thank. Uh, Victoria Flynn, who serves as the director of Berlin's COA and social services, is the first person we would like to thank. Uh, we've been working with the town of Berlin for over a year now. And though many of our components uh, to this study, uh, she was always there uh, to offer tireless support during each step of the assessment. Our work would not have been possible without collaboration from Kristen Rubin, who serves as the assistant town manager, alongside the town of Berlin staff who have been our guides along the way. Additionally, our gratitude goes out to Scott Hawkins, who uh, is the select board chair. Uh, he made contributions to the project as well as Eric Schartner, the chief of police, and Michael McClellan, the fire chief emergency management director. Other departments throughout Berlin informed our work. Moreover, we would like to take the opportunity to thank the many, many community stakeholders that offered contributions to this needs assessment, including the many residents who took time to participate in our survey. So again, we do this kind of work in communities all over the state of Massachusetts, and we can tell you that the outcome is only as good as the input that is provided. And Berlin really showed up to support this project. We're enthusiastic about what we want to thank everyone for and, and for all of their time and energy that they put into our project. And so uh, I just wanna give you a quick bit of, um, I'm having a little trouble, there we go. Uh, just a quick bit of background. Um, uh, we conducted a demographic pro profile alongside six key informant interviews. Uh, the interviews were tailored to learn the experiences and expertise of those working most closely with the community of Berlin. And those interviewees included municipal staff, caregivers, and community stakeholders who talked with us about their experiences living and working with adults of all ages in the city, in the town of Berlin. And so many of the folks uh, for who participated in these conversations may be watching this presentation now. Development and planning documents from the town were also reviewed in our document review. And lastly, we conducted a mild survey. One of the things that we always struggle with in this work is that we know there are some members of the community who may be isolated for some reason 
where they're not participating in the COA or through social services or in other community events. So we like to make sure that we hear from them uh, and those additional voices are reached and heard. And so we mail a survey to residences as well as making it available online. In the end, uh, ultimately we received 519 responses. So that's a strong response rate of 21%, which is very good. About 50% were returned online and the rest were returned by mail. So in the end, uh, taken together, this overarching process, all these different components that I've explained to you, all focused on identifying the strengths and assets of Berlin, identifying the gaps in features and resources that support aging populations, and identifying ways to improve the livability of the community for residents of all ages. And so um, one quick reminder, the purpose of this collaborative project was to identify and describe not just the needs of Berlin's adult population, but also their preferences. And now the results of that process and information designed to support Berlin's adult population to live and thrive in the community are presented. So first we looked at the overall population and we see that older residents make up a significant share of Berlin's population. And projecting into the future, uh, this trend is expected to continue. Population growth in the town of Berlin has been concentrated in older age groups. Between 2010 and 2020, as you can see in the graphic, uh, the de de uh, decennial census, um, the population of all ages increased by 10% in Berlin. These absolute numbers of residents age 60 and older also grew substantially during this time period from 712 residents in 2010 to 957 in 2020. The segment of Berlin's population 70 and older increased in size by 150% during this, this period. Uh, it's also important to note that in 2010, about 25% of Berlin's population was aged 60 and older, and this percentage steadily increased by 20%. Uh, I'm sorry, it's increased by 31%. Uh, Donahue Institute project projections suggest that by 2030, 1,482 residents or 43% of Berlin's population will be age 60 and older. 35% of Berlin's population will be between the ages of 60 and 79, with an additional 8% age 80 and older. So with that, uh, in the survey, Berliners indicated a desire to stay in the community as they age. More than half of the respondents have lived in Berlin for 15 years or longer. And so it's not surprising that a large number of those residents want to remain living in Berlin as they get older. When asked how important it is for them to remain living in Berlin as they get older, 52% responded that it is very or somewhat important for them to remain in Berlin. And this percentage was higher among older residents. Uh, the graphic that I'm showing you now illustrates that for more, for more than one out of four respondents younger than 60, it's only slightly or not at all important for them to remain living in Berlin, and that these rates drop among those in their 60s to 13% and 70s, 14%, and only five respondents in their 80s do not value staying in Berlin. So taken together, with age comes a commitment to remaining within the community. We conducted interviews and survey write-ins, and what we found is that they demonstrate that residents really love their community. The strong sense of community location and natural beauty of the town are the key values that residents share. Feeling safe and secure in a rural environment with proximity to urban resources came through in write-in responses. Conversely, uh, residents share strong concerns about their ability to remain in Berlin as they age. Among the most common concerns reported were relevant to housing op options, maintenance issues, and cost of living challenges. These concerns were extremely prevalent, including staying healthy and independent. So next, we explored housing preferences that the adult population believe would support independence. And this graphic illustrates the need and preferences reported. Uh, survey participants were asked to identify the type of housing that they would prefer if a change in health status or physical ability required moving from their current residence. 
Responsi re respo <clears throat> excuse me, responses vary by age. Among the youngest respondents, highest rates were future housing as a smaller family home being desirable by 56%. And among residents aged 60 to 79, independent senior living community was most preferred at 35%. This housing type is also as an age restricted housing that is developed to age in place. Among those in their 80s, assisted living was most preferred type of future housing. This interest in senior housing options by those age 60 and older has implications for housing stock needs in Berlin. Interestingly, a number of respondents would prefer affordable or subsidized housing and an additional 4% would prefer an apartment. Additionally, uh, we learned that roughly a third of residents surveyed uh, do have a bedroom and a bath on the entry level of their home, which indicates future challenges to meeting self-care needs for older residents. This is an additional consideration. And so next uh, we explored living alone uh, and we explored uh, driving. And so living alone has the potential to lead to social isol isolation and has implications for services that may be needed by the older segment of the Berlin population. Um, this is an important consideration as residents rely on themselves, family, or friends to get around. And 29% reported that they do not drive. Although many modify their driving habits to facilitate self-transport, it's important to consider increased demand for transportation options. And so next we moved on to uh, looking at caregiving. And generally, most of the care and support received by older adults due to health dis difficulties or disability is provided informally by family members or by friends. Caregiving is common among Berlin's younger residents and most find it challenging. Specifically, when asked how challenging it was to provide care and meet other family and work responsibilities, 68% of caregivers responded to the Berlin survey stating that it was very or somewhat challenging. This was especially true for those younger than age 60. Nearly three quarters or 72% of those providing care reported it was very or somewhat challenging. And 65% of those in their 60s reported the same level of challenges. Many in this age group are likely still working and therefore may be struggling to meet the demands of both caregiving and work, even for the age groups between 65 to, to 70, and those who provide care find it very or somewhat challenging. We also looked at uh, attitudes towards local policymaking, and it seems there is room for improvement in action taken by local policymakers. Survey respondents reported uh, that their level of agreement with the statement local policymakers consider the interests and concerns of older adults as feeling ignored or neglected by community leaders and can be viewed as some form of exclusion with negative consequences for residents. So in translation, this means that about 60% of residents are satisfied or very satisfied, uh, while 20% disagree or disagreed strongly with 20% offering no response. The pattern of results is similar across age groups and suggests that while the majority of survey respondents are satisfied with this dimension, there, there is a lot of room for improvement in action taken by local policy makers uh, or perception of those actions on the part of residents. So, Next, let's take a little closer look at the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services. First, uh, there are a few key takeaways to participation relevant to Berlin's Council on Aging and Social Services. Overall, participation increased with age as expected. Um, again, 18% uh, of respondents in their 60s report ever using programs or services offered by the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services. Then about 28% of respondents in their 70s and 35% of respondents in their 80s indicated they have participated at the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services. Some only visit a few times a year and 15% attend weekly uh, and 16% monthly. 
This range of participation levels highlights the broad continuum of affiliation with the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services, with many residents participating just periodically, while others include visits as part of their regular weekly routine. So we looked at factors that limit this participation and participation reported the top factors uh, that limit their engagement uh, are not needing programs or services offered, still working, uh, which is very common and not knowing what is offered, what that was reported by 30%. So not surprising among those under the age of 60, those respondents currently in their 60s still working and not having a need are at the top responses. And for those in their 70s, these shifts to not knowing what is available and not needing offerings was the most common. Among those in their 80s, the most cited factors limiting participation included not needing the programs and services and not being interested in what is offered. These results suggest there's a perception that one has to need to attend a senior center, not just desire, and that the accessibility to community resources for those in the workforce is crucial to participation. So when we look at, uh, if we look at retirement a little more closely, those who responded that they're still working full-time or part-time, 41% uh, expect to retire within the next 10 years. Interestingly, more than one out of five respondents who are still working do not know when they expect to retire. Since a substantive share of the population is, excuse me, is planning to retire in the next decade, those who choose retirement, maintaining an active lifestyle and contributing to the world around them can be very important factors when considering how to spend their time. And it has implications impacting Berlin's Council on Aging and Social Services. So developing new programs and planning for increased demand uh, for uh, individual services may be useful. So now we see uh, preferences for increased engagement. Uh, when asked to indicate uh, what would make it more likely, they would use services offered by the Berlin COA. 39% of respondents reported having more knowledge about the programs and services uh, available would increase their likelihood of participating. Um, this also uh, translated to about a quarter of residents who would be more likely to utilize the resources if they function like a community center for all ages. And then 17% would be more likely to utilize programs and services if, they were, if offerings were better suited to their needs and interests. Uh, about 82 people or 15% of residents took the time to write in other factors that would increase their likelihood of participation. Upon review of these responses, topics included intention for future use of services and program with phases like, as I get older, alongside, if I had more time. For example, one respondent wrote, if I needed them, I don't know, but may in the future. Uh, additional comments illustrated the matter of someone to go with and knowing others using the Berlin services and the Berlin COA programs and services and that uh, knowing those other individuals could increase the likelihood of their participation. Uh, a last theme reinforced by these comments was needing more information about what was offered. For example, one respondent wrote, if I knew what they offered, uh, and another respondent wrote that they were not familiar with services, and so they could not offer any input. So next, uh, we explored preferences and taking into consideration future needs and interests, survey participants were asked to prioritize what features or offerings of the COA as us would seem like uh, they would really prefer to have them expanded. And so the most commonly reported priority for future expansion across groups is indoor fitness. And this was reported by 40% of survey participants again, across groups. Outdoor fitness is a close second at 38%, day trips at 37%, and performances selected by 32% of participants. 
Um, it's also important to notice that wellness program was uh, extremely popular future expansion topic as was social educational activities. And so if you break it down a little bit more for my, more by age, uh, among more respondents under age 60, indoor and outdoor exercise is most preferred for future expansion as our arts programs, such as uh, painting, music, digital photography, and 41% of respondents uh, in, this, in this age group under 60 prefer this type of program. For those in their 60s already, indoor and outdoor ex exercise and day trips or excursions are most preferred. Ultimately, these results suggest that a higher frequency of attendance and attraction of new attendees could be attained through maximizing current trip and indoor exercise offers, offerings and developing new and different arts and culture programs. Some respondents took the time to write in their ideas for new expanded programs. And some of these uh, included in-home supports, educational opportunities, and transportation to neighboring communities. Uh, priorities for programming and support are detailed in this slide. And when it comes to services offered by Berlin's Council on Aging and Social Services, respondents were asked to similarly prioritize areas of future growth. Uh, among younger respondents, wellness opportunities were most valued, including things like massage or med meditation. And among older respondents, having access to lunch or regular food office offerings is a priority moving forward. And so considering future planning of the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services, respondents were asked about the likelihood of participating in an all ages community center. Residents across age groups we're open to the idea of multi-generational facility, uh, including further exploration of interest in community center, in, <clears throat> excuse me, interest in community centers. And so across ages, nearly half or 47% would be very likely or somewhat likely to participate. This slide illustrates that across age groups, the likelihood of participation at all ages uh, in a center ranges from 36% of those in their 70s to 60% of those under age 60. This means to us that stakeholders recognize that expanded space and offerings require additional investment in staffing, communications, coordination, and, out and outreach. And so it's important to note that the high levels of unsure responses illustrated in this slide, uh, more than 40% of those age 60 and older are unsure. This suggests that public education and input is necessary to move towards the development of an all ages community center space in Berlin as residents express interest in exploring community center options. And so the key findings of the community needs assessment are intended to inform the planning and development of Berlin's municipal departments and the Council on Aging and Social Services, as well as other programs and services in the community. So please keep in mind that population aging does not just affect the senior center and older adults. It affects municipal services of all kinds. And so information will be useful to those in other departments around this, the town of Berlin as well. And so lastly, uh, this report seeks to raise awareness of the needs of Berlin residents both among stakeholders, but also the community more broadly. So as a reminder of the overarching process focused in three areas, uh, again, we, we, we focused on identifying strengths and assets. Uh, secondly, uh, we identified gaps and features and resources that support aging populations. And now that we've reviewed that information, the next step is to identify ways to start to improve the livability of Berlin as a community for all residents. So let's review identified gaps alongside ideas for Berlin, Berlin to begin the process of planning. And so uh, this slide, uh, we're gonna look at the demand for programs and services for residents of all ages that was expressed uh, in the findings. And since this trend is expected to grow in the coming decades, uh, there are a few suggestions uh, for uh, the community to begin the process of planning. And so uh, it's possible to expand the capacity of the COA and social services department to offer more social and health programming 
Uh, for example, you could consider hiring part-time instructors or part-time coordinators to ensure continuity in a variety of program delivery. Um, you can investigate opportunities for providing programs and services at additional satellite locations around the community, such as public housing, utilizing the library, schools, and local businesses. Uh, you can pilot test a, a lunch program, explore identifying uh, volunteer guest speakers, uh, tap into uh, the, the uh, vast number of people who could volunteer uh, to participate and consider being assigned and designated as an age dimension from the community. Uh, this provides an avenue of community organization and outreach could, that could support the effort to build and renew perceptions of aging in Berlin. And lastly, uh, routinely assess the adequacy and range of health and community supports offered for promoting and maintaining and restoring the health of Berlin's residents. Next, uh, there's a desire for space to gather and current capacity is reported as not sufficient. And so uh, for planning to address this, you could consider exploring additional ways to connect with community members for impact and, impact and feedback uh, about what unifying public space might look like. Explore multiple avenues of communication and information. You could utilize uh, written feedback, email, online feedback, uh, possibly post public forums and ensure the perspectives and representatives of the community are all heard to, get, to gain a better understanding for how to align all segments of the population. Uh, you could consider updating the Council on Aging and Social Services space with new paint decorations and furniture uh, and make it a more welcoming space. Uh, there's also a possibility of organizing a task, task force to identify suitable existing space while exploring the appetite for uh, the potential of a community center. Be sure to include town departments that uh, might be most affected by the development of the center, such as the Department of Recreation, as well as school leaders in the Council on Aging and Social Services. Um, when we think about communication, uh, awareness and understanding of the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services is reported as uneven among residents. Now, to address this, uh, you could consider exploring developing a resident ambassador program to educate residents with information about existing resources to be conduits between social services and the Council on Aging and the community more broadly. Uh, it's possible to investigate ways to become first time participant, to, to welcome first time participants uh, because sometimes they're reluctant to participate on their own. And so examples of this would be uh, hosting a new member day or bring a buddy program uh, in order to welcome newcomers. Um, begin a rebranding effort to raise awareness about what is offered uh, by the Berlin Council on Aging and Social Services. Uh, you could also consider changing the name to make it more uh, occlusive and appealing. Expand the use of technology uh, is the final suggestion to include residents who are unable to leave their home in existing programs through video technology, for example, or making friendly visits by telephone. Housing is a massive challenge uh, and having downsizing options, uh, being able to perform routine and essential maintenance as well as cost of living challenges are prevalent for Berliners. And so uh, consider ways of connecting residents with local resources for home repair and modification. Uh, this could include sources of funding, but also, other uh, also with other individuals who can do minor tasks and projects at home. Advocate for options that current residents prefer. Uh, promote awareness of various housing options across the lifespan and continue to contribute to local conversations about housing options for older adults who wish to find supportive housing. Uh, consider advocating for options that current residents prefer, including types of housing that offer low maintenance. Uh, Host a, viral, a virtual forum to promote community conversations and awareness related to home sharing opportunities. Uh, as an example, you could include representative from Nesterly, which is a social enterprise 
that is dedicated to building intergenerational engagement and access to affordable housing through home sharing or treehouse model. Uh, promote awareness of existing property tax relief program and uh, document the number of residents who are turned away. Uh, this would enable you to start to plan how you might expand access. Um, and then, you know, there are always ways to explore other incentive programs for other volunteers in the community to be part of the tax, tax abatement program. There is a desire for improved accessible outdoor spaces. Uh, you could start to think about planning the dedication of existing benches or installing new benches as age-friendly or happy to chat benches. Um, they should include features like shade, uh, armrests and solid pathways to and from the bench. Um, I think that it's important to recognize that public restrooms are extremely important and that uh, some, some residents will not leave town and will be reluctant to go out and about if they're not aware uh, where they exist. And so uh, another suggestion is ensure that uh, public space parking um, and beautification plans in Berlin include input from residents of all ages uh, so that those new spaces represent all age groups and encourage collaborative community of garden, garden projects where residents are paired with a household who can host a raised garden bed and then they can collectively care for uh, and benefit from the plantings. Uh, additionally, there's a demand for COA services and social services support and Ber Berlin Residents need support due to physical and cognitive conditions as many care caregivers need help. And so create new ways of providing information and assistance. Uh, consider creating a COA homemaker position part-time. Uh, hypothetically, uh, you could consider uh, part-time as 16 to 18 hours a week. And the, the position could focus on providing short-term in-home support. Uh, track demand for this municipal program and consider future expansion as needed. Uh, another good idea is to host a caregiver's night out, which provides residents who might be caring for a spouse, parent, or grandparent an opportunity to enjoy a night of entertainment. Uh, explore partnerships with volunteer groups uh, and assess the potential for offering a memory cafe uh, or providing resources of nearby cafes for residents and their caregivers to attend. And then uh, pilot testing volunteer respite programs uh, and maybe bringing encouraging uh, city employees in as dementia friends are also pro pro programs that you could consider. Um, in the end, uh, continue to coordinate with other COAs and organizations to connect Berlin caregivers with existing services. Transportation concerns for Berliners were widespread. And so I think conducting targeted proactive outreach uh, to raise awareness of what actually exists and making sure that uh, individuals understand how to, um, how to contact transportation options for medical appointments and other trips is essential. Consider developing a local travel training program where residents can learn options and navigate driver education refresher courses and targeted information to segments of the community uh, that have particular transportation needs uh, could be a good example of programming. And then explore the expansion of volunteer transportation programs beyond medical appointments. And so an example of this would be Friends in Service Helping uh, with the acronym FISH to expand door-to-door -door transport to the senior center or other social ga gatherings or shopping excursions. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for listening. Uh, I appreciate your time. And Caitlin and I would like to open the discussion uh, and give it back to Victoria. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, it is a lot. Um, I think you gave us a very, um, very concrete, very uh, in-depth, uh, you know, report as to 
where, you know, some things for us to consider as to really where we need to move forward. I think some of the suggestions like we are trying to implement, um, but, you know, as you know, a lot of the stuff I think just takes time and, um, and hopefully, you know, now knowing, you know, and able to highlight more so a lot of where the residents' means concerns are, it's stuff that, you know, not only myself, but other boards and committees and departments we can look at to really try to hone in and focus on, you know, meeting the needs of the residents, which is absolutely priority. So I really appreciate it. Um, at this point, um, I'm just checking to see if there's any hands up in the audience. I don't see anything. Um, I just wanted to let, oh, here we go. Hold on just a second. Um, um, Kristen, you can, um, you can go right ahead. Okay. I was, I was just going to say thank you again so much for the presentation. Um, it's really beneficial in terms of information. Um, there were just a couple things that really stood out to me. One of which was the housing um, types. And I want to make sure we get this information to our housing trust and our planning board, because they are looking at the types of housing products that we should have in this town going forward. Um, so I think that's really a critical piece of information. The other piece that really flowed throughout the presentation was communication and how can we improve kind of our communications on all fronts. And it's one of the first questions I actually got asked when I arrived here is how are you going to communicate with the residents? And, you know, we've tried a couple of different ways between the website, social media, putting the town administrator reports on the website so folks can actually see what's going on, you know, every two weeks or so. But um, I guess my question for you um, is, do you have any other suggestions on the communication side of sort of generally what you've heard that local government officials can do to better improve that communication back and forth between the community? In, in uh, my experience, my, my sense is that uh, a lot of individuals will really pay closer attention to information when it's needed. Meaning, you know, you can send hard copies of a newsletter on a regular basis to to homes. You can make phone calls and uh, do wellness checks, things of that nature um, that are really meeting people where they are uh, and proactively understanding what needs might be. Um, I think that that's a big challenge for municipalities, but at the same time, uh, older adults seem to be more responsive to it. And also, um, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think, you know, younger, uh, under 60 residents felt that they were ignored by the community. And so I think, again, finding ways to meet people where they are in the community, I think is a really great idea. And so maybe, you know, it's at youth centers, maybe it's at, uh, you know, in the faith community, maybe, um, there's some way to, to hold some kind of an event. Um, there's a reliance, I think, for all of us to rely, to really just lean on social media and Facebook um, websites, maybe a little more than, um, like maybe it's not as effective as we think, right? And so the information's out there, but a lot of times, again, I think people don't really look for it until they really need it. And so part of communicating is forming bonds with, with the community, if that makes if that makes sense. No, absolutely. I think that's really beneficial. And you know, one of the things we've talked about is, you know, how do we get kind of the downtown more vibrant with events and getting more folks out and about, and um, you know, being able to connect through that way. So, thank you. To be clear, it's a it's a massive challenge, right? And I I walk past my share of bulletin boards without like reading a single thing on it. And, you know, it's, I think it's really hard to get people's attention when there's so much stimulus and, and things going on. And so, um, yeah, I think my, there, there is this, especially, um, you know, in a lovely small town like Berlin, you know, there's that, that human component of people, maybe, you know, people don't know everyone's last name, but you, you know, you know, someone's first name and, uh, you know, people are friendly and they have places where they meet. And I think, Finding ways to to attract people uh, on a personal level 
uh, is a good good way to start. All right, thank you. Um, just for the general public out there as well, um, something we just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of was uh, two questions that kind of came up was um, A, like how was the study funded? And the study was funded through ARPA funding that the town had received um, back during the COVID, main COVID crisis. And um, part of the reason why we want to have this study done was that, um, you know, as Mary's highlighted, and as we all know, Berlin is a very, you know, small community in terms of just general size and population. And uh, generally speaking, when there's potential opportunities at the state or federal level, for potential funding sources, such as grants or things of that nature, a lot of this information that they want to see is a like, you know, the bigger cities and towns that they try to prioritize for this funding. But they also want to see too hard research as you know, have you talked to the residents? Have you heard from them? Like, what is it that they want? And I think Though Berlin has grown exponentially in the last 20 years, I think having uh, having this kind of research in our pocket is going to help us, again, you know, do our best to meet the needs of everybody here um, in the town and make sure that, you know, we know where to focus. Um, so we just wanted to make sure people were aware of that. Um, but um, I just wanted to just let everybody else know, um, you know, if you guys have any additional questions, um, Mary and Caitlin are both available. You can certainly reach out to us as well. Um, if you wanted to, we can make sure that you guys have their contact information so you can send them an email. Or if you wanted to reach us, out to us directly, we can certainly, you know, pass on any questions to them as well. Um, and we, like I said, we just want to make sure that, you know, people are understanding why we why we explored this and hopefully, you know, you, you were able to enjoy the survey and that you guys were able to see, you know, as we've mentioned before, you know, we were not involved in terms of the survey, you know, we, we, we were involved in terms of like the questions, but, you know, we were really happy to see that residents took the time out of their busy schedules to really give us their input. So we just wanted to thank everybody again for that. And Mary, I thank you so much for your time and presenting all of this information for us. Like I said, it's a lot for us to digest, but I think it's it's good because it's going to give us definitely some steps forward. So we are very appreciative. Well, thank you very much for listening and uh, hope to talk soon. Absolutely. We want to thank everybody for joining us and we will talk to you all soon. Hopefully see you all soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.